The Beef Research School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. Decision making by producers has been influenced by carcass quality, but not to a large part that like we've seen in other species. I don't know that producers have necessarily seen a premium because of the structure of the industry, uh, being that the, the cow-cow producer often sells to the feedlot and then they're the one who, who captures the value on it. But slowly we have seen more priority placed upon carcass merit selection. And uh, I think as the science uh, becomes a little more accurate in the prediction of those traits, we'll see more of it, more of it come to fruition. I think that it's just like anything else. If you can uh, take your selection process as a, a whole, a holistic approach or a, a whole process of, of selecting uh, for balanced traits rather than one specifically. We've seen what happens if you select for a bigger ribeye or more marbling or more lean meat yield. But if you take the middle of the road and, and select for a balanced package, I think that's a safer place to be. And then you can fit into different premium niche markets with that. Marbling, of course, is very important. Expected progeny differences, or EPDs, are probably the best tool of, of displaying information that we gather as breed associations. At Canadian Semital, we have a North American evaluation, so we uh, incorporate it with our American counterparts to give more accuracy and, and data into the system. EPDs measure the difference between two given animals expected progeny differences, so you would hope that, you would expect that that information will relay to you the differences between the progeny out of those bulls. You also have to keep in mind the uh, influence that the dam has in that uh, process as well. But if you're selecting your sire and you need to select for performance, say, or uh, calving ease, carcass quality, maternal calving ease, all those things can be identified through EPDs. Now we've gotten into a process of, of implementing genomic research or DNA technology into that with genetically enhanced EPDs. So that's going to give uh, far further or far greater accuracy at a younger age. That's a different, a difficult uh, process to follow through. The BIC system or Beef Information Exchange System does allow for that data to flow back from the packing plant to the cow-calf producer, but you have to be engaged in that process. At this point, it's, it's the, usually the feedlot, or if you've retained ownership into that feedlot, you do get the data back, but it's usually just the feedlot that gets that information. But like I said, if Bix, uh, when Bix comes fully online, it's gonna provide that information for the cow-calf producer. Yeah, there's always uh, disadvantages, uh, things that can go awry if you do single trait selection, whether it be for strictly calving ease, you'll give up some performance. If you go straight for performance, uh, you may give up calving ease as well. With carcass uh, trait selection, if you focus strictly on the, on the carcass uh, quality of an animal, you may give up a lot of maternal uh, influence or traits as well. So yeah, for sure, you don't, you don't want a single trait select just for carcass quality. It has to be part of an overall equation. Having said that, if you do have a terminal program, you can focus a little more on uh, the terminal side of things. And that's why some breed associations do have an all-purpose index and a terminal index that they can attach to their APDs. I think uh, the genomic research that Canadian Semitol is doing will, and other breed associations as well, certainly will impact uh, and, and provide a lot of accuracy to the EPDs, as we call them, genetically enhanced EPDs or GEPDs. Uh, it gives accuracy at a younger age. A lot of our bulls that, that we sell as seed stock producers are yearlings and uh, don't have any proofs as to what they can actually offer. So it's really a prediction equation that uh, you're looking at. With that genomic influence of adding the DNA uh, uh, mix to it, 
the, the genomically enhanced piece, that'll be just like a, a, a first calf crop being reported on that calf. So you'll take accuracies from probably 0 0.08 to maybe even 0.3. So a huge, uh, huge booster benefit to the to the use of uh, EPDs for your selection. Awesome. Thank you very much.